we're ready to dive into another set of urban legends. This is Urban Legends in America, part number 17, and we are getting way down to the end. We are almost finished with all of our states, and uh, it's th these have been really fun episodes, and I I'm, I'm going to be sad when we're not doing them anymore. I'm sure Mitra does not feel the same way because she's the one that's doing all of the research and everything. Every I, week on I like doing the urban legends and yeah, I would like to continue into other countries doing their urban legends. Cause I think that'd be really interesting to see what that would be interesting. What's similar in, you know, from country to country, you know, right. Have well, we, similar urban legends. That would be cool. It is cool. We've actually covered a couple like urban legend, ghost story type things on our strange stories episodes from overseas. Um, yeah. So it would be really cool if you guys want to check those out. Those episodes are streaming for you now. Um, and if you want all of our episodes link in the description of this show, we'll take you to ev everything, all the things that you want from us. But anyway, let's dive into urban legends in America, part number 17. And what states are we heading to? We are doing New Hampshire and Maine, and we're going to do two from each state this time, since there's only two states we're doing. Okay, New Hampshire and Maine. It's a little bit more fun to get to do two, because there's so many good ones to choose from. It's so I hard agree. to choose. I agree. It is fun. So first up, we have the Danville New Hampshire Devil Monkey. He devil monkey devil monkey okay okay so this devil monkey was first spotted by fire chief david kimball on august 21st 2001 okay he was driving his truck on kingston road when a monkey-like creature jumped out of a tree and into the road yeah the truck seemed to have startled the creature and it quickly jumped back into the tree that it that it came out of yeah 11 other people reported seeing the Danville devil monkey near Kingston Road between August and September 2001. Yeah. A married couple saw it in their backyard. Multiple people reported hearing screeches and strange animal noises from the woods. So this devil monkey may also be a cookie thief. A boy oh, the left the worst kind of thief. Yeah, so a boy left some peanut butter cookies in his treehouse and when he came back they were all mysteriously gone. And he told his mother and his mother was like, "What are you talking about?" And she didn't believe him, but going yeah. back and thinking, she was like, "I uh, I think this thing took his <laughs> cookies." Yeah. Sh Should have left him some milk. Peanut butter cookies are hard to get through without milk. So. You need the milk. I think it's like a quintessential part of a peanut butter cookie. Yeah. Like, you know, with honestly, any cookie. With I was going to say, with, with all cookies, you need milk. Yeah, definitely. They just leave that texture in your mouth, no matter what it yeah. is. Whether it, it be a... soaks it up. You need something to I cut know. the dryness with. Even with it's like a graham cracker, I feel like I need something. Yeah, graham cracker with marshmallow and chocolate on it that's called a s'more and i don't know if that necessarily <laughs> qualifies as a cookie anymore that's the only time i'm eating a graham cracker if it's like covered in chocolate and marshmallow uh, so. sometimes i like to be nostalgic and grab a graham cracker like i'm in kindergarten and just go to town on it get a box of animal crackers no okay. just the graham crackers <laughs> but yes so animal crackers too why not and so I know for a fact you like animal crackers. I didn't say that I didn't like them. Oh, okay. okay. Not animal crackers. Right. What do I like? The 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 uh, circus ones, the That's mother's right. circus frosted the frosted ones. ones. Okay, yeah, with right. the, the sprinkles. Okay. The pure sugar, sugar. That's madness. right. That's <laughs> right. Okay, so the right. people in town mm -hmm. thought it might actually be a pet monkey on the loose. So David Kimball, the fire mm. chief who first reported, reported seeing it, yes. said it resembled a, a humble woolly monkey. These monkeys stand about 16 to 24 inches tall, and they are tree dwellers, but they're native to South American rainforests, not New Hampshire forests. Yeah. So some of the townspeople tried to capture it, but they were unsuccessful. And then September 11th, 2001 happened. Mm -hmm. And everyone forgot about the devil monkey and there was no, no more reports and people thought it didn't survive the winter or that the owner captured it because it's illegal to have, you know, that I don't know if it's illegal to have all kinds of monkeys, but apparently it was illegal to have that type of monkey Yeah. in that area. But all I could think is, okay, so I'm guessing it probably was somebody's pet monkey. Yep. And what if you're the owner and you're like in this town and everyone's like, 
at the town meeting and they're like, well, this monkey's on the loose. We got to get it. And the owner's like, it's some kind of devil monkey. Like, <laughs> it's some kind of cryptid, right? Like, oh, that's right, not what yeah. it is. It's a devil Couldn't monkey. just be a regular monkey. It's got to have some kind <laughs> he of He doesn't want to get in trouble for having this illegal exotic animal. Oh my God. So uh, a devil monkey is a type of cryptid. They are said to be large bamboo-like with kangaroo legs and pointy ears. They've been in spotted in areas like Kentucky, Arizona, and Virginia, just to name a few places. Okay, but not Devil New Mon Hampshire. Well, this one. Yeah. Okay. So devil monkeys are said to be vicious. They kill livestock and are known to attack cars. But this Danville devil monkey wasn't attacking anyone or any cars. And I'm guessing most likely it was just somebody's pet. And they probably that. captured it. They they were able yeah. to capture it, but it was just on the loose for a while. And you got to think, like a lot of times when there's these sightings of weird animals, and they're like, "I saw it. I totally saw it." I'm like, mm. "There's got to be a certain percentage of them that are some exotic animal that somebody's keeping, and it got loose one night." Yeah, yeah. They're like, "Oh crap, <laughs> my chimpanzee got loose, or whatever." I'm sure of it. I'm sure. I mean, that's why you're not supposed to have exotic animals for that exact reason, because you never know what's going to happen with them. Yeah, they will rip someone's face off if you have yeah, a monkey. It's very you possible. Not, you do not want to have a monkey. No, like, you mon do not. Monkeys scare me. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> they are and scaring. rightfully rightfully so. Even the small ones, if they can grasp a knife, then I don't want it. Like, they're smart and they can grasp a knife. If you, like, piss them off, who's to say they're not going to, like, get a pair of scissors and start jabbing it in your face or neck when you're sleeping? Like, Wait to what be that prevents night. them from doing that? I'm going to wait for the be that 911 caller getting a call from you and been like, I need help. I'm being held knife point by a monkey. I don't know where it came from, but I can hold a knife and I'm terrified. I would never get near a, a monkey. Never. Well, what if it snuck up on you in a back alley and was like, hey, give me your money. And it has a knife. I mean, you don't know. Planet of the um, Apes could happen. I guess so. Who mm -hmm. carries money on them anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'd He'll be in trouble. Credit. He'll steal your credit <laughs> and your debit card. Don't worry. And I'd be identity yeah. theft. That's all. That's which is way worse. That would be a really smart monkey, actually. Yeah, I mean, maybe they should take over the world. That's true. So I know you love a good spooky cemetery. Well, who does? If you're ever near Wilton, New Hampshire, make sure to stop by the Vale End Cemetery because you might see the Blue Lady. Ooh. So at the grave of Mary Ritter Spaulding, a column of blue mist is said to appear and rise out of the ground. Okay. Mary Ritter Spalling died at the age of 35 in 1808. Okay. She had seven children in 10 years, which is like insane to me. And mm -hmm. she's only 35 with seven kids. It's crazy. So her husband, Isaac Spalding, remarried another woman also named Mary. So she was also Mary Spalding. Yes. So when Isaac and Mary number two eventually died, they were buried at the same grave site and they all share one grave marker which is strange. Mm -hmm. The blue lady ghost was first reported in the 1970s, which is way, way after she died. People claim it's Mary number one, and she's mad that Mary number two is buried next to her. And I don't know. I don't know. To me, I don't think there's no reason why Mary number one would be upset. Like, why would oh. she be upset? And who's to say Just it's jealousy. not Mary number two's ghost or right. Isaac's ghost? Like, I don't understand why they assume, or anybody else is in the cemetery ghost. Why do they assume? That's true. It's this Mary. There was right. other rumors too that her husband buried her alive, but I they believe there are records of where she died and oh, uh, she was 35. So I don't know where that yeah. one came from, but there yeah. are a lot of reports of this uh, blue mist by her grave. And they her grave's been vandalized many times. I think it also was like found in the forest nearby. Like okay. not that long ago, like somebody actually picked it up and moved it. Now there's like chunks at the top missing and it's like you can hardly read it anymore. Why do people do that? You know, we we go to a lot of cemeteries. We like to explore them. We like to we, we like to look at them and appreciate, you know, the artwork that has gone into some of these headstones and everything. Because you see some really unique ones, especially from a long time ago. They used to put a lot of work into these. And you, you don't see, you don't see it as much anymore. Yeah, and this one was pretty simple looking and somebody mentioned that they thought that a piece of it was being auctioned on eBay, but that itself may also be an urban legend. I'm not sure of that one. Well, could we find that out by doing a quick eBay search? 
Well, this would have been a while ago. Oh, so okay. All right. I was going to say. It wouldn't right. be there. And I don't even think it would be like in the sold section. Like, yeah, I don't right? know. Yeah. Here's your chunk of stone. Here is your chunk of stone. That's a weird, that's a weird one. But, you know, there's a lot of uh, urban legends like that around different cemeteries about like a mist appearing and then a ghost or whatever yeah. happening and whatnot you know i wonder what is the significance of the blue is it just it's just that that's what the mist is it's, it's just, just blue, blue color okay all right which i don't know does it make it more believable that it's not a white mist because it's always white right so if it's something different like blue it almost seems more believable i guess it seems really interesting to me that it would be blue i like i like that it's blue somebody said they had a picture of it materializing and I looked at the picture and I couldn't see anything. I'm like, what are you talking about? I see nothing. So I don't know. Did it, it was... look like blue mist at least? No, it didn't look like mist. It didn't look blue. I don't know what they were talking about or what direction I was supposed to even be looking. I was like, I see nothing. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's some that's some that's some trickery right there. I don't believe that exactly. one bit. Not one like, single bit. I know. Every time you see like a video or a picture and they're like, look, it's there. I'm like, what? I see nothing. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, that was weird. So next up, we're going to Maine. And this is another cemetery one because cemeteries are fun. Yeah. So this is in Sabbats, S-A-B-A-T-T-U-S, Sabbatus, Maine. Sabbatus, Maine. Okay. So in the late 1990s, a group of teenage boys were wandering around a local cemetery. Yeah. They found an old stone well in the back and dared each other to go down it. One of the boys accepts the challenge and the others lowered him down the well on a tire tied to a rope. Okay. Like this, like part of the story just bothers me because I'm like, was the tire already on the rope for the well? Yeah. Or did they find a random tire? Yeah. Was there like a tire laying around in the cemetery? Where did the tire come from? Like I, right, I, I like keep why? getting hung up on the tire. Yeah. I don't understand. So there's just this random tire there. Perfect okay. for someone to sit on. Okay. Okay. So they lower him down the well until he's out of sight. They waited a few minutes and then called out for him several times, but got no response. So the boys, so the boys get nervous and they quickly pulled the rope back up and there he was sitting on the tire still, but he had aged significantly into an old man with white hair and wrinkles. And he was babbling nonsense words. What? So he was examined at the local hospital and eventually sent to the county mental institution and he never recovered. That's it's like the opposite of the fountain of youth. Oh, yeah, it is. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, like it's the fountain of I was yeah. thinking like he went through e. a portal or something, but yeah, like well, that's fountain true of old fountain of old fountain of aging the, you're right though 100 percent, you are correct though that could have been a portal that's an i like that that better than the anti-fountain of youth thing well, that i said i was thinking about that m night Shyamalan movie we watched old oh, old yeah where like a certain area was just rapidly aging them what if he went into yeah. like an area like that where it was just whatever was rapidly aging him god what if that's where m night Shyamalan got the idea for his movie from yeah, that like, urban legend right maybe so maybe so yeah. it's mm -hmm. a really weird creepy one yeah yeah we can't hear mitra's dog again everybody so say hi to avery <laughs> he's such a boob yeah he's a boob that's he wants right. to get in on maybe he's been he needs to be lowered down at a well that's very true maybe he needs to, <laughs> he needs to be <laughs> well but eight, he's already an old dog you can't i do know that. so That's what happens a, when you're already old if you're already an old man yeah and you get lowered down into the well do you come back a skeleton yes exactly if you're yeah. an elderly person and you get lowered down you come back as nothing but bones yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen in that movie. The cover picture was very misleading. The cover picture was very misleading. Uh, the movie overall was very terrible. Um, so if you're yeah. looking for a movie to watch, and honestly, you know, I there have been some really great M. Night Shyamalan movies. I enjoyed them. I enjoy Signs. I enjoy The Sixth Sense. I enjoyed, uh, at least I thought that I enjoyed um unbreakable but then the upon my uh, next viewing of it I, later in life i did not enjoy it <laughs> yeah i one i think we talked about m night Shyamalan like way too much on this show 
<laughs> I don't remember the last time we talked about I him. I feel like time. we talk about him too much, but oh, you, I, I agree with Unbreakable. I feel like that one was a very slow paced mm -hmm. compared to his other ones. Yeah. Although this one was extremely slow paced, too slow for me. So yes. if you want to watch it, it was on HBO Max. I no, mean, don't watch it. Don't tell, don't do that to our to our audience. No, don't watch it, people. As a matter of fact, avoid it at all costs. I feel do like not watch old. It it was Bad an interesting movie. concept. Interesting concept, poor execution. Very M. Night poor. Shyamalan has lost his luster. Okay. He can't do it anymore. He just does not have I, he that did factor. it for like two movies and he was done. He did it for quite a few movies. I thought it was pretty good. I thought he yeah. did an okay job, but not so much anymore yeah what happened now, the I'm one sad. with james mcavoy was pretty good though whatever that one was split split yeah split was pretty good I, I, that was I good enjoyed that. yeah anyway all right so where is where where's our next urban legend going so the next one is the Sacco River Curse in Maine. Okay. This is a really good one. Yeah. So in the the mid 1600s, mm -hmm. the Sokoki people lived near the mouth of the Sacco River. Mm. The leader was named Squando. Squando. Okay. Squando. He was also a shaman and he always tried to keep peaceful relationships with the English settlers. Okay. But that all ended in 1675. Squando's wife was on the river in a canoe with their infant son. Three white English sailors were rowing to shore and they spotted the mother and baby. They had heard of this, I guess, like at their time, you could call it an urban legend. Yeah. That indigenous babies were born with the ability to swim. So they pulled their boat up next to her canoe, snatched the baby and threw him in the water. Oh my God. The mother, I know. The mother jumped in to save him and she was able to pull him from the river, but he died a few days later. <laughs> sorry, sorry, lady. I thought your baby could swim. Yeah. My bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Devastated and wanting revenge for mm -hmm. his son's death, Squando went to the Saka River and unleashed a curse. He asked okay. the spirits of the river to take the lives of three white people every year. Oh, so there's slight variations of this story. Sometimes both the baby and the mother drown. Sometimes the mother is also pregnant and the unborn baby dies. Oh, so a few variations. Yeah. So I was reading like on Reddit and stuff and people were sharing stories about it. And some of the white people that were growing up in the area there when they were kids, their parents wouldn't let them go into this river unless three white people had actually died. That's a crazy urban legend. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't want to be like a statistic, right? Like no. if you, especially if you're already in your head and you're thinking it, then you're just worried every time you're out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there is like, there was one person that said um, that they almost drowned. They were, I think in a canoe or a kayak and it went up, turned upside down mm -hmm. and they were like, I don't know how I survived it, but they said their great, great grandmother was like native american and they think because they weren't purely white or something that's why they didn't die yeah because it was only for the white people okay so i thought that was interesting that's so very this, interesting yeah yeah so the Saco river does claim three or more lives a year yeah like that is a thing but it's a very big river okay in 1947 there was no deaths and they claimed that the curse had been broken but that was the only year that there was no deaths on the river. Oh, okay. So go ahead. Were you going to say something? I was going to, they have one of those signs that was like no deaths in this many days. Oh. And at that day they were able to put zero and then. Well, do you, do they, do they take like, do they take count of just the white people that die? Like, I don't know. I don't know. That's <laughs> a good question. Like, Oh, wait a minute. That person Maine. wasn't white. Does it count? Does Maine. it count? Stop being so racist guys. I, well, yeah. So a lot of these stories and legends yeah. are based on real events. Yeah. So the real story is white Englishmen did in fact cause the death of Squando's son. They tipped over the canoe he was in and he did drown and die. Good Lord. So yeah, like I said before, Squando had always tried to keep the peaceful relationship with the English, but after yeah. his son's death, he no longer trusted the English and Squando and the other tribes kind of joined together to fight against the English in King Philip's war. And that okay. kind of, for them, kicked off that area, I guess, going to war or whatever, because they weren't 
doing anything with the war at that time. Right. So this so-called curse wasn't mentioned until 1883. And it was just basically made up because the people wanted to blame the indigenous people in the area for the drownings on the river. So right. they just made up this, this curse saying, oh, it must have been the curse because, you know, that's what's happening. The people back then were just so gullible to believe like literally anything like the, the witch trials and and this well this is 1883 and, and i think at that time that's like still too that's still people were doing the yeah. seances and all that stuff they were like super right. into that at that time um you know it only took one person to come out of there and then like oh so-and-so died on the river and they're like it was the curse and they're like the exactly. curse and that was it. And that was just now that went down in history as it's cursed. It was, because it happened so long ago. So it happened yeah. 1676 or whatever. And this is 1883. That's like 200 yeah. years for yeah. someone to be like, must have been that 200 years ago. Like, are you kidding Wild. me? So there is plan for a bronze statue of Squando and his family to be completed in 2023 through okay. the Bideford Culture and Heritage Center. Yeah. So they sure want that'll to make, change that'll make history. <laughs> well, they want to change history and have a, you know, a plaque next to it to explain, like, you know, this is what happened. You know, yeah. there was no curse. The English killed his son. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I wanted to know because of the baby swimming thing. Yes. All, all human babies have a yeah. natural reflex when they're submerged in water a baby will hold their breath and open their eyes. And this reflex is from birth to about six months. Really? They can't actually swim. It's hmm. just a natural reflex that they hold the breath and open their eyes. And I don't know if you've ever seen those videos where they're throwing the baby in the water. Oh, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. So the baby can like hold it, but that's they can't resurface and they don't have the strength to hold their head above water and they definitely can't hold their breath forever. You know, they only have a limited time because, yep. you know, it's just for, I think, accidental falling I, in the water when they're little that you can go get I, them, you know? Yeah, I, I know that babies can do it. And I know people who have done that like to teach their kids how to swim but like no no thank you not doing yeah, that yeah it's scary i don't think i would want to do that but it's also good to train your kid at a very young age not to be scared of the water because i was scared for my kids to go in the water and that definitely caused a problem with them growing up you know and not wanting to even put their head underwater like not sure. even at bath time so it created a problem so it's good not to be afraid of the water so but I don't think you need to throw your child in the water like that. No, I don't. Well, so don't. Also, because there's dry drownings or secondary yes. drownings. And those scare me. So that can happen just in bath time or like you just get water in your throat and you swallow yep. it. It gets into your lungs and it can happen just at bath time. If your yep. kid ever like inhales the water and then they're just choking really bad. You know, mm -hmm. like, oh, what? They're okay. They're okay. And then that yeah. night they go to bed and drown in their sleep. That's mm. all I have. Okay. Well, that was a good, those are good episodes and, or those are good urban legends. I will be, I will be sad when we're done exploring the American urban legends, but obviously there's a lot more of them out there. So they could make so a revisit more. at some point in time, but this is, uh, you know, our series is coming to a close. How many episodes do we have left now? Cause you were kind of talking to me about it earlier. I have of just the United States urban legends. I have two more to do. Okay. We're well, going to do a, one just on New York since that's you're right, New York. baby. We did that's one just right. on Texas. Well, all right. That's all we have for this edition of Urban Legends, but we can't wait to dive into more of them for you as we continue with our last couple of Urban Legends in America. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs>